All right, guys, today we're going to talk about 2-7, and 2-7 is proving angle pair relationships. If you remember in 2-6, or when you get to 2-6 with me, that we're going to talk about a theorem, and a theorem is a statement that can be proven, and once you prove that theorem, you can then use that theorem in any other proof. So, for example, my first example in 2-7 is going to prove theorem 2.3, right angles. We're going to prove that all right angles are, con are congruent. So if we look at our first proof right here, angles 1 and 2 are right angles. I want you to be able to prove that angle 1 must be congruent to angle 2. So we're just going to work through these proofs, see why they work, and then we're going to be able to use these theorems in other proofs. And I promise you, by the end of Thursday, you will get an idea of the type of proofs that we need to do, and I think you'll be way more comfortable than you will be by the end of today. So for example, so the first thing is this. One and two are right angles. We know that's our given. What we have to understand is in the next step, I'm taking exactly what I say here. One and two are right angles, and I'm asking you to just I'm changing it mathematically. Instead of saying they're right angles, I now say they equal 90 degrees. Well, when you just change something mathematically, all you need to do is use the definition of what is above. So if I'm just changing this, it's the definition of what a right angle is. That's how I go from English to math. Then I'm now simply just saying, well, if that is true, that they're both 90 degrees, then I can say angle 1 equals not measure of angle 2, sorry, so look here. Measure of angle 1 is 90, 90 degrees equals the measure of angle 2. So by property, I can cut out the middleman, and I could use substitution slash transitive. And now, if you look again, I just took that there, the measures are equal, and now I'm telling you they're congruent. So I'm just simply changing the language. And if I'm just changing the language, you're using the definition posh, you're using the definition. And that is why our theorem says that anytime you know that two angles are right, that they are congruent. And so now I want to show you what a proof would look like that would use this theorem. So we're using the right congruence theorem. So if you look at this, A and B is perpendicular to BC. DC is perpendicular to BC. So yes, in your head, you should realize that because they're perpendicular, it makes them 90. And because they're 90, therefore, I can say that they are congruent. So let's look at what the proof would look like. They're perpendicular. That's my given. Second step. I just tell you, B and C are right angles. I'm just taking what it says here and putting it in a different language. If I'm just changing the language, you're using a definition. So it's definition of perpendicular lines. And then lastly, look here. I tell you they're right angles. So if they are right angles by the theorem we just proved, I now know that all right angles are congruent. So I can simply say, since B and C are right angles, B must be congruent to C. And that is using the right angles congruent theorem. So we proved it, and now we can use it. So we're good to use it from here on out. My next two theorems is the congruent supplements theorem and the congruent complements theorem. And we're only going to just prove the supplement theorem in the next one, but we're going to be able to use both of these. And all they're saying is this, that if 1 and 2 are supplementary, okay? So for example, if you just did it mathematically and thought about, okay, if this is 60 degrees, this would have to be 120. Now if I tell you 3 and 2 are supplementary, then this has to be 60. Well, if that's the case, then 1 and 3 must be congruent. Same goes with complementary. If this was 40 degrees, this would be 50. 
And if these two are complement, then this would be 40, and therefore 4 and 6 have to be congruent. So in this proof, we are going to prove this, why this theorem works. And I want to show you their justification. So the first thing is we copy the given. Well, that's given to you. So we know that 1 and 2 are supplements, 3 and 2 are supplements. So right here, I'm just changing the language. Instead of saying 1 and 2 are supplements, I now say measure of 1 plus measure of 2 is 180. And the measure of 3 plus the measure of 2 is 180. That's just changing the language. So by just changing language, I use definition. Now look what happens in 3. I now say, well, okay, if 1 and 2 is 180, and 180 equals 2 plus 3, I cut out the middleman, 180, and say this equals this. So hopefully cutting out the middleman, you realize, is transitive or substitution. I would take either or. Now, I have an equation. And I know I'm trying to get down to angles 1 and 3. Well, if they both have 2 in it, how can I get 2 to go away? So hopefully you realize you subtract, and I now get 1 equals 3. So that's simply subtraction. And now lastly, instead of it saying equals, I'm simply changing it to congruent. So I'm not changing anything special except the language. Instead of me saying the measure of angle one is the measure of angle three, I'm now saying angle one is congruent to angle three. And that is simply by, if I'm just changing language, I'm using definition. And what am I using? Just the fact that that's the definition of congruent angles. Okay, so anytime I'm changing just language, I'm using the definition. So, now that we prove this can work, any time I come up with the fact that 1 and 2 are supplements and 3 or 2 are supplements, then I'm going to know that angle 1 has to equal angle 3. And so that's going to come later. We have a postulate in our notebook that said the linear pair postulate. You already know this. You know that if angle one are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. You already know that. You could be feel free to use that. What we're going to prove is the ang vertical angles theorem. And once we prove that, we are then going to be able to say that vertical angles are congruent in any other proof. So if I look at seven, I'm going to prove why vertical angles are congruent. So go ahead. You have five and seven are vertical angles. Right? And we look up here and we know that vertical angles are across from each other. My second step is to say that 5 and 6 are a linear pair, and 6 and 7 are a linear pair. The reason they're a linear pair is by definition of a linear pair. Linear pair are any angles that are next to each other and they share a common um, ray and they are supplementary. Now, I now change from, instead of me saying they're a linear pair, 5 and 6 linear, 5 and 6 are supplementary, 6 and 7 are linear, 6 and 7 are supplementary. All I'm doing is changing language. So once I just change my language, I'm using the definition. And what am I using the definition of? Whatever's right above it. So that's the linear pair postulate. Um, The linear pair postulate is basically the same thing as definition of linear pair. So I would be okay with either one there. And now last, look what we're left with. We're left with five and six are supplementary right here. And six and seven are supplementary. And now we just talked about this, that right here, if two things are both supplementary, then I know those two angles are congruent. So if I know 5 and 6 are supplementary and 6 and 7 are supplementary, then I know both 5 and 7 have to be congruent. And that's by the congruent supplement theorem. It's also pretty close to transitive if you realize 
five and six are supplementary, six and seven are supplementary. Well, can I just say five and seven are supplementary? So I don't think saying transitive here would be completely bogus. I just, they want you to use the fact that the, that if two things are supplementary, then the not middleman make those angles congruent. So that proves our theorem. Um, we are later going to work on proofs that use these. That's what we're gonna do tomorrow, and I think you'll get a pretty good understanding and you'll have a much, you'll be much more comfortable for Friday's test. Um, I know you're kind of probably still a little uneasy, but that's okay. I promise you, you'll be ready by Friday.